Hi, I'm Kamel Fisher and you're watching the Sequoia Spotlight, brought to you by Shrex Inc. I'm the Vice President of Platform Services at Sequoia for Shrex Inc. And with me, I have Amy Raskov, Vice President of Investor Relations for FOM Biosciences. Today, we'll be discussing a little more about their recent earnings report. Amy, welcome. Thank you so much for having me today. You're very welcome. Amy, first off, give us a roundup of what FOBM Biosciences with the ticker EVFM does and uh, a bit of a business rundown, if you will. Sure. We are a commercial stage biotech company. We have brought to market and launched the first and only hormone-free woman-controlled birth control method called FEXI. Um, and we have been marketing now for a year and a half, and we are continuing to grow our sales quarter over quarter and year over year. And uh, we have the same product in a, a registrational phase three clinical trial for the prevention of chlamydia and gonorrhea, which would be a label expansion opportunity, very near term opportunity for us. So we are very busy and growing on all fronts. Wonderful. Uh, to jump straight into the earnings uh, overview, what can you tell us about the product sales so far? Well, we more than doubled our product sales for FEXI in the fourth quarter compared to Q3, and that was driven by our national DTC campaign um, with our celebrity ambassador, Annie Murphy, who, as you probably know, was one of the stars of Schitt's Creek, and it is just revolutionary. It has grab, really grabbed the attention of women and of healthcare providers alike who are you know, gaining awareness that there is a hormone-free option, that they don't need to suffer the side effects any longer, and that, that FEXI is a fantastic thing for them to be discussing with their providers and getting a prescription. So we, in the fourth quarter, driven by this campaign and the ongoing efforts of our sales force across the country, um, we not only did we double our net product sales, but we also, um, we saw an increase of 81% in our units dispensed and nearly 70% rise in our total prescriptions, which is just fantastic growth in one quarter. And in 2022, we're focused on continuing that momentum um, with net product sales growth forecasted to go from just north of 8 million for last fiscal year to the 35 a million, 30 to 35 million range for 2022. So we're really excited about where we're going and, and looking forward to getting there and beyond. On the macro level, the market, of course, has been impacted by the geopolitical issues currently facing us with the Russian and Ukraine war. Add to that the uh, inflation possibilities. Uh, how is this, in your opinion, affecting the healthcare sector and FOVM? Well, you know, broadly across the healthcare healthcare sector, you know, there's certainly a, a some impact going on where you know the sector in the markets is is currently not in favor. But I think that with regard to women taking charge of their contraception, that doesn't change when there's a war. Right? Women need to control when they're having children, how many children they're having, and empowering women is always positive for any market. Additionally, not impacted by the situation in Europe right now, um, we did see in January some very positive progress in Washington, where both HRSA as well as the tri agencies led by the Department of Labor announced new guidelines that say that all FDA-approved contraceptive me methods should be covered by a commercial insurance, or most commercial insurance, at zero copay to women, which is highly beneficial. So instead of having to pay out of pocket, you know, whether it's $25 or $50 copay level, um, women really should be receiving all FDA approved brands, um, especially uh, unique ones in their categories like FEXI, which is a vaginal pH modulator, um, at zero copay. So that helps them keep that resource despite inflation. They can use those dollars for other things like putting food on the table for their families. Uh, so I'll jump a little bit into the volumes and, and, the, and the stock price. So EVFM closed at $0.36 a share on March 14th with a 30-day average volume of about 2.4 million shares. Would you like to add any light to that or perhaps to the heaviest volume day that was experienced on February 16th with the full 4.8 million shares um, changing hands on that day? You know, I think that what's really important for investors to keep in mind is that Getting into a stock like Evofem at the current price is an incredible opportunity. We have an FDA approved product. It is revolutionary. It is shattering the hormone glass ceiling. And we are really still in the early stages of, of commercializing in this, op, in this market. This, if you take just small percentages of the different segments of women who are targets for FEXI, that includes women who have been using no contraception at all, 
those that were using over-the-counter methods like condoms or, or you know, things of that nature, as well as women who were using hormones because they didn't feel they had any other option. Just small acquisition percentages in each of those three categories gets you to around a $1.3 billion really addressable market opportunity. And given that we are within six months of our top line data for preventing chlamydia and gonorrhea, which again, would enable us to file with the agency early next year, and we'd expect it to be approved, assuming positive data, by the end of next year for these two new, completely underserved, unmet needs, that would double the market opportunity for Fexi. So the fact that you could get in now at such an attractive price for a company that is just poised for exponential growth. We think that it actually is really worth taking a look at. Great, and I totally agree. A uh, great opportunity right now and an awesome product, you know, keeping in mind uh, women empowerment, women's health. So I'm totally in favor of that uh, as a, from a personal perspective. But I wanna to touch now on the analyst reports that have recently come to light. EVFM has been on the topic of many analyst reports showing uh, specifically a decline, firstly, on the short interest in February, but then also showing a strong H.G. Wainwright um, report for, for buy, specifically. Would you like to add some color to that? So I think it's fantastic that our covering analysts recognize the opportunity here and are encouraging investors to take a look, really investigate the fundamentals of the company and the fact that they do believe that we're undervalued. They feel exactly the same way that we do. Actually, another analyst just put out a roundup note across the biotech industry today and included us among the 20 names that they believe the street has completely not baked any value of our late stage clinical asset into the current valuation. And again, that they're just highlighting that people should be taking a look at Evofem and really thinking about the fact that this is a company poised for growth, that you know, with the shorts decreasing, that's fantastic, that takes some of the pressure off the stock. Um, and why would you be shorting a stock like this, at, especially at current valuations? I mean, really, it just doesn't make any sense. So yes, we're delighted with our analyst coverage right now, and especially for that, that note that you highlighted. Excellent. Are there any exciting new products on the horizon? Well, as I mentioned, we've got that phase three program that we just early completed enrollment in, by the way. So we'll have that data readout within six months, so early in the fall. And that is enormous. There are about 4 million cases of chlamydia alone in the U.S., and that has a cost to the healthcare system of about $700 million. There are no FDA-approved products for the prevention of chlamydia, and there are none for gonorrhea either. And as I'm sure you're aware, gonorrhea is becoming increasingly resistant to antibiotics, so it's a significant need. The CDC says that every sexually active person is at risk for contracting either of these STIs. And by the way, chlamydia is the, one of the leading causes of infertility, which, as you know, is, is an increasingly... Um, pro increasingly large problem in this country as well as around the world. So, you know, we are very, very excited to complete this landmark clinical trial, bring out our data, file with the FDA on the basis of that data, supported by the incredibly positive prior clinical trial that we conducted. Um, and then beyond that, we also in our pipeline have an asset that's ready for stage two for the prevention of recurrent BV, which is another bacterial vaginosis, which is another um, very, very big problem for women. And then we also have an early stage collaboration with Orion developing uh, a product together that puts an HIV targeted product of theirs delivered in FEXI with the goal of bringing to market a product that women can use one product to prevent pregnancy, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and HIV all at the same time. Nothing like it exists and it would be revolutionary. Excellent. Sounds disruptive and all-inclusive for sure necessary at this point. Uh, you touched on competitors and the lack thereof. Is there anything further you can guide us on in terms of potential competitors coming to the market um, and also what that would mean for perhaps your five-year forecast? Um, so ultimately, in terms of the competitive landscape, yep. Yeah. So the category of contraception has been dominated since the 60s by hormones. There's been really very little innovation. There have been you know, different types of pills, lower dose pills, you know, longer term pills, it's still a hormone. Their IUDs, the only, the only real prescription alternative to FEXI that's hormone free is an IUD, which as you know, is painful on insertion and stays in your body for a long time. And it relies on the copper and irritating the vaginal lining. It's got risk of perforation. So, um, you know, if women wanted that, they'd already be using it. Clearly they don't. 
In terms of women switching to FEXI, we've already seen actually about 30% of them coming from the pill. So we understand that women are, if they're ready to go beyond hormones, if they're tired of taking that hormone in their bodies every day, every week, every month, when they're not having sex every day, you know, they've got this fantastic opportunity now to do so. We do monitor the competitive landscape. You know, we know that there are some other uh, creative approaches being taken, but we don't see anything uh, on the near-term horizon that it would be remotely competitive to FEXI. Um, but ultimately, you know, women's needs are, are not all the same across the board. So choice is great. It's fantastic that there are so many different opportunities for women to meet their needs. And when they realize that they're beyond hormones, FEXI is a fantastic opportunity for them to take control and, and put that in their hands. Um, so we just, over the next five years, we expect that we're going to continue to grow both in preventing uh, contraception, rather in preventing pregnancy with no hormones, but also increasing dramatically once we add on prevention of chlamydia and prevention of gonorrhea. And again, we'd expect to be approved for those indications by the end of 2023. Excellent. Amy, you mentioned quite a significant raise in, in revenue there on the 80% um, mentioned earlier in this interview. Can you explain how the distribution channel works and where can ladies really get your product? That's a great question. So it's two different systems. So our distribution channel, we manufacture the product. The product is then sold to the wholesalers. So that's when we recognize revenue. The wholesalers then give it out to their channels. But for the woman, you can get your FEXI. So it's a prescription product where it's FDA approved. So you have your discussion with your healthcare provider. You either go to your OBGYN for your annual visit, or you set up a telehealth visit with them, or you go to FEXI.com and connect with a telehealth provider that way. You talk to them about your contraceptive needs, your concerns, your situation. Situation, they determine that FEXI is the right product for you. And then you go ahead and get your prescription. You can either go down to your drugstore on the corner, or you can have it filled again by one of the online pharmacies that can send it directly to you. And if you go through FEXI.com, it can be seamless. It can be on your door within uh, 24 or 48 hours. It's that easy. Then, because FEXI comes in a box of 12, by the way, so it's you get 12 applicators in one box. And so once you've used your FEXI, you know, you're, you're down to your You've used 10, you've got two applicators left, you go ahead and put in an order for a refill and that can get delivered to you or you can pick it up down at that corner pharmacy. It's so straightforward and very, very easy. What are the delivery times like? Well, again, most of these companies are, are shipping overnight. So again, 24 to 48 hours, uh, you would expect to have your FEXI. But the great thing about it being an on-demand method, it's not like a hormone where you have to time it for starting the first day after your cycle finishes. You can start FEXI anytime and you're only going to use it when you're having sex. It's so very easy. You would just open your applicator pouch, right? you take your FEXI out of the box, you insert the plunger into the barrel, take off the little pink top, and then either just before sex or within one hour before having sex, you can do it in the bedroom. You can be discreet in the bathroom. Doesn't matter. You insert FEXI into the vagina. You press the plunger and it goes right in. And you can see, I'm going to hold the glass upside down. It's very, very bioadhesive. This is a glass. It's not even a bio. It's not the vaginal epithelium, but it stays in place. It stays in the vagina. It's not messy. It's not leaky, but it's also very viscous. So it has that lubricating property. And so it stays in place. You have sex. And how it works is it maintains the normal vaginal pH in the three and a half to four and a half range, um, where semen, when it enters the vagina, is trying to raise the pH to around seven or eight to where sperm can survive. So by maintaining the normal vaginal environment, sperm cannot survive. They cannot swim up the canal. They cannot do their job of fertilizing the egg. There you have it. It's that simple. And the ingredients are generally regarded as safe. So they're food grade, actually. So this is an incredibly safe product. Um, and, you know, that's another benefit for women. They can have full confidence in the safety and efficacy of the product. Excellent. Is there any age restriction on this product? None whatsoever. In addition, um, in addition to any woman of reproductive age being able to use the product, I also want to highlight that it can be used. So if, for instance, if a woman is you know, on a pill largely because she wants to control her acne, but she knows that she's missing her pill and not taking it exactly the same time of day every single day in the month, she can use FEXI to make sure that she's protected. Because as you probably know, the efficacy of the pill goes down to only around 91% when it's not being taken at exactly the same time every day. And what is the efficacy of FEXI once again? 
That's a great question. So on a per active sex basis, FEXI is 99% effective in our clinical trial. Um, that is a post hoc analysis. Now our label tells you that when it's used as directed, it's 93% effective. That's pretty high numbers. Yes, it is. And it's so easy to use. Women, we're, look, women are smart. They got this. They know that if they're going to have sex, they need to insert their FEXI within one hour before doing it. And have there been any cases of FEXI not working uh, in any reports from, from women who have used it? It's a great question. In our clinical trial, approximately 25,000 acts of sex occurred, and there were just over 100 pregnancies in the clinical trial. And by the way, that included pregnancies among women who enrolled for the trial, were given their product, um, but in their, you know, they had to record the data in a, in a monitor, and they reported that they didn't use the product but got pregnant on trial, and that did count as a non-trial pregnancy. No method is 100% effective. I mean, not even, truthfully, not even a lark is 100% effective. There are instances where women have gotten pregnant on an IUD. Um, the only method to guarantee that you're not going to get pregnant is not to have sex. But that's also not necessarily the best way to have a happy, healthy life. So we believe that, you know, if women are responsible and they use their method as directed by their physician, that's the best way forward. 100%. Excellent. Where can investors get more information about FOFM Biosciences? That's a great question. You go to evofem.com and click on the investors section. Um, and if questions aren't answered by all of the information across our website, my number is there on the contact page. Drop me an email. Give me a call. I'm always happy to connect with our shareholders and potential investors as well. Amy, thank you so much. Before I let you go, give us three takeaways that you would want investors or any viewers to take from this interview. Evofem Biosciences is growing our net product revenue through our sales force, through our marketing, through growing awareness among users as well as healthcare providers. We grew substantially in the fourth quarter over the third quarter. We're expecting ongoing growth in 2022 and beyond. We are innovating in R&D. We are near-term near late stage on prevention of chlamydia and gonorrhea, which are highly unmet medical needs among all people across this country and across the world. There is nothing approved for prevention of these incredibly prevalent and pernicious STIs. And we are on the precipice of delivering a product that will address that need and unlock significant value for our shareholders. We are absolutely focused like a laser on delivering for women who need our product and product candidates and to deliver value for people who've invested in us and continue to support us. And we are grateful to all of them for their ongoing support. Well, all the very best for the coming quarter, Amy. That's the Vice President of FOM Biosciences, and you're watching the Sequoia Spotlight.